is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Field, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Hey, Wednesday! <laughs> it is Wednesday, right? <laughs> Hump day! Hump day! The black cat, man. Black <laughs> like <a> cat. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know how I'm getting old. How's that, my We brother? were having our little social meeting yesterday, and we were talking about songs with, you know, word cat or black yeah, cats in it. Yeah. And I brought up, man, what about that Janet Jackson song, Black Cat? Yeah, yeah. Everybody looked at me like I had a horn growing <laughs> out of my head. I was like, have y'all never heard of that? And they were like, no. Nah. And I was like, hang on, you'll know it. I played it. Nah, never heard of it in my life. I'm you like, got man. that black cat back there, dude. Hey, wait, we got a special treat today on the show. Welcome back to the show. We got the band together. Douglas Barraclo. I Hello. love you, man. Hello. I love you, man. Hey, Whatever Douglas. you get a chance to dig, you do. <laughs> How you doing, Doug? I'm doing well. How about you guys? It's been a while. I know. You know what you should do? Once a month, you ought to guest produce. Well, that'll be a that'll be a negotiation with Kyle. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I think he's. I think he. Well, between. You guys and me, he says this is the most fun show. So, oh, mm. oh, that's nice. Well, don't sit down in front of Derek. Well, he don't listen to the show anyway. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, let, 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 let me say this here, man. Call us, by the way, 888 97. Yeah. 97. Oh, we had some breaking news just now. You want, yeah, you want to get yeah, to that yeah, real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't want to talk about it after that. You know, I don't want to drag down our show. You just want to talk about right I don't want to do like go. you did yesterday and drag down yeah, the show, I, you and Jesse. I got scolded yesterday by a fan. <laughs> they said, hey, Still love the show. Thank you so much for what you do. But when we win, can you please start the show off with, with positiveness <laughs> instead of killing the vibe? <laughs> so sorry about that, April. What's the breaking uh, news? Her name there? is April. Mm-hmm. Uh, April. Miss April, thank you for, for listening. Jesse, what's the breaking news? Cowboys injured defensive lineman Daniel Ross was arrested early Wednesday morning. Possession of marijuana and uh, carrying an unlawful weapon. So I'm mm. assuming that's maybe not having license or paperwork for the gun. Yeah. Um, in Frisco. In Frisco. Mm. So somewhere. Is that is that is that like? Do you have your sources or do you see that on Twitter? My sources. Oh, this is. Mine's been all over the place. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't been. know if this was a, like a download thing just between us four and Douglas, or this was. <laughs> Public knowledge. Yeah, no, we're, nothing about us four and Douglas is down low. <laughs> I don't want that to be. People will cut, hey, that, people will cut yeah. that audio up a lot. Like, oh, what they got? Oh, that's what the that's what hanging with the boys means, huh? <laughs> yeah. So it won't be a cowboy season unless someone and got arrested. Somebody's got it. Yeah, you're right. Right. You're right. It, just, it just wouldn't be. Now you know what? Now I'm positive and I'm I'm optimistic that we're getting ready to go on a run. You think? We're getting ready to we, go to We run, got huh? this out of the way. It Somebody finally, suspended. It finally happened, so yeah. now we can go on with yeah. business. Yeah, and, uh, you know, ironically, if you remember, Daniel Ross, he was picked up 2007 when a roster spot came available. They needed to fill a roster spot when Zeke Elliott got suspended. Mm, 2017. Yeah, 2017. 17. You said 2007. I'm sorry, 17. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, damn, he's been around that long. I'm sorry, 17. I'm if sorry. Zeke would have been here that long, I'd have been with, I'd have been with you like, don't pay this dude. Was, excuse me. <laughs> he's over here. 17. Sorry. All right, man. All right. The bad news is out of the way. Let's. He was hurt anyway. He hadn't been on the field this year, right? That sucks even more. Right. Yeah, because, yeah. And welcome to the show, Kurt Daniels. Thanks for joining yeah. us today, Kurt. Yeah, I'm here. You were here. Yeah. I'm just welcoming you to the show. Thank Everybody you. Everybody else has talked. So Glad to be here. Just getting you some airtime, so. Thanks. All right. And what were you going to say before I interrupted you like eight times? And no, that, just took us no over? you got it's good. It's good. I, I just want I just want to get that out of the way, man. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. Let's go to the phones. Mm-hmm. And Doug's working the phone, so we should blow through some callers today. 30 seconds. Does Doug have that heavy hand like Kyle? I don't know. We're going to see. <laughs> James, you going to test Douglas or you going to get it in his James, got to get right to it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? 
Just one one quick thing on the Giants, you know, Cowboy game. You know, it's only a rivalry if the other team beats you. So that's why I got to say it to the Giants out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you go to the game? We was there, baby. I tried right. to uh, hit up Shannon on, it, on uh, Twitter, but he didn't respond, of course. You know, he's a famous guy. Big timer. <laughs> I don't check Twitter. He responded to that lady named April. He sure did. You told me to check it, Shannon. You told me in to fact, check you on it. That was Instagram. I know, man. I, on game day, I just forget. I don't check Twitter for like I every two days. Man, I want to see what April looks My like. My bad. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Um, just real quick, you know, I thought, you know, I, I agree. I think the team can go on a run. But don't you think, though, the way they played it the first half of the John game, they got to clean it up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because just a lot of bit. Good. Yeah. Just a lot the of thing bit. Is, I, yeah. I, I think this team is really good, but their attention to detail has got to get better. You know what I mean? Because I think that's the one thing that will hold this team back because, uh, you know, let's face it, they, they really, if they want to. Oh, no, no, no. 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 I like I'm it. Just kidding, he's still there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was just gonna say they got it. They got it. They got it. They can't lose more than two games because I think you know. Let's face it, eleven and five is probably going to be a ten and six. So you know they're going to have to go on the road one of them games to win probably two if they want to get to the Super Bowl. So the attention to detail has got to get a little bit better. That's all I'm going to say about that. Thanks, James. Good hearing from you. Sorry I better. didn't answer your tweet. My bad. I agree. That's why I I am optimistically skeptical because they still won the game. Skeptical. Yeah, they still won the game. But if, think about it. They didn't have those two turnovers. This is a totally different game if they wouldn't have gotten those two turnovers. Right. Right? Three. They got three, right? They get three? I was running around chasing that cat, up, three. I guess, during the three. They got three, yeah. man. Because right. uh, like Xavier uh, got a, a pick in mm-hmm. a forest form, and then my man picked it up. Jordan. Jordan, right. And then we got a something else. What was the other one? Quarterback. Oh, strip quarterback sack. Uh, yeah. He, on that run, he ran, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's three, man. Don't count on seven in the last um, two games and five in the first six or whatever. Man, we rolling. Yeah. What do y'all think? Got, definitely got to clean it up, right? Mental mistakes? Yeah, we've been saying that all year, so – <laughs> Curry heavy hit. Curry I mean, heavy hit this morning. Wow. You hope they will. I mean, they need to because they got some good teams they're playing now. So mm. they can't afford to be getting down in nine point deficits, 14 point deficits. It'll be tough to come back yeah, from. Especially if you're playing a, a good team, mm-hmm. a really good team. Giants are okay. All right, Adam in Atlanta. What's up, Adam? Hey, what's up, man? It's been a while. I know. How, How you been? Doing? Good, man. I've been busy. I haven't been able to call in. I've just finished uh, wrapping a TV show. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. What you into, bro? Uh, I work. I'm an assistant director, so I work on TV commercials. I just finished doing a new show with uh, Mike Rowe, the Dirty Jobs guy. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Just got finished traveling a little bit, doing some work with him. So it was great. We had nice. a great time. Nice. Is he is he a sports fan? Do you know? Uh, he is not, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely not a sports guy, but he's an awesome guy to work with. He's a, He was a blast. He is the type of person you think he would be. Good. It's good to hear. Cool, man. So should I so jump I, in now and try to promote myself to maybe get with him to work with a TV show or just let him be a caller? Do you think? No. Oh, do you think? You <laughs> got a pitch? Man. I do. You can hit, hit me up on Twitter, Jesse. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, hit me up on Twitter. I'll DM you. I got a really good show I did that I think that that is bringing two worlds together that's really popular right now. Doesn't involve us? I'm all, I'm all ears, man. Yeah, we can, I, I can have you guys on on the guest. Support, supporting cast? <laughs> I, can have you guys I don't on want a guest. Hey, he's saying you have you as a non-paying guest. I want a real role. No, I'll pay. Well, I would pay everybody. Like I'm all about everybody eating. Hey, me too. Yeah. I'm I'm like, we'll care, I don't we'll, give we'll you care money, care but I'll bring you food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but go ahead, brother. What's your question? Hit me up on Twitter later on, though. I will, man. I okay. will. Um, so, hey, my question is uh, the tight ends. Like, I love seeing Blake Jarwin do what he did on Monday night. But uh, mm-hmm. my question is I love Jason Witten. And uh, Jesse, you could speak on this because you, know, you played with Jason. What you know, is Jason? He's a great player, but not all great players are good coaches or good mentors. Is Jason a good mentor for that tight end room? Is he is he coaching these guys up a little bit and educating them on, you know, how to prepare and, and what to do? Is he bringing him back, you know, good education for these tight ends? That's a great question. Great question, Adam. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. Um, I, I had this conversation a, a couple of years back when the whole Martellus Bennett thing came about, mm-hmm. and there are two type of players. When you talk about uh, mentorship, there are some who will take you under the wing and, and like literally show you how to do everything. And there are some that are saying, step back and watch what I do. 
mm-hmm. and try to emulate it. And I think Jason Witten is more of the step back, let me do it, and then you just mimic what I do. Mm-hmm. More so than let me take you under the wing right. and walk you through everything. Like a Larry Fitzgerald type. Right, yeah. right. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's, that's not a knock right. on Jason Witten. It's just two Witten. different styles. It's just two different styles of how they do things. Um, one of the big things when I was here with, with, you know, with him and Martellus and other guys was it, it was it was, okay, I'll stand back here and watch. Okay, but now let me go yeah. and show you. And he was still like, no, no, stand back there and watch until you get your turn. But a turn was never allowed for him to have. So it was, okay, you don't want to really show me it. I got to watch you do it. But then when they finally give me an opportunity to do it, you're looking back like, why am I coming off the field? So it's, it's, it's that kind of dynamic where, and I don't blame them. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't blame a dude for saying, it's not my job to teach you anything. Mm-hmm. Right? Roy Williams told me, I asked him about certain plays, and he said, don't they give you the same playbook? <laughs> I'm like, I just want to know what, what you had on this route. And he was like, you got the same playbook that I got. Patrick Creighton was the one who came in and said, hey, come on, I'm about to go watch film. Let's come sit down and watch it with me. Mm. So <clears throat> love both of those dudes. Just one approach was a little bit different than the other one. Yeah. So he's going to sh- – like if you watch if you watch Jason Witten, you're going to see all the things the way it's supposed to be done. He's not necessarily going to say, hey, young fella, come sit right here next to me and let's break this film down. Mm-hmm. Is he a guy, though – if someone came to him with a question and said, hey, why option? Tell me what you're seeing here. What do you do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you so, surprised that, like Blake Jarwin, he's, he played 36% of the snaps last year when he wasn't – when Witten went around, he's playing 40% of the snaps this year. Is he? He's participating in 40% of the snaps this year. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. I like yeah, that he, word. He played last year. He participating this year. He getting a ribbon. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the phones. My guy, I actually requested this man to call in, and he was able to get through because there's only two other people that actually called the show. G in Jersey. What's up, my man? What's happening, fellas? Did you- hey, Nate. <clears throat> Nate, I got to give you props, man. You're right, man, because I was in the stands looking down, and my boy TJ said, you think Shannon on the sideline? And when I seen that man head, I said, "Did he go right there?" Stop! Man. Stop! Well, you right, man. Stop! You know what? Yeah, you saw him, dog. You know why? Listen, Cause bro. You up in the Listen, stands bro. looking down at that angle, it makes me look short, makes my head look bigger. That's what it is. I don't know, man. That's that study was stretched, man. <laughs> man, you right, man. But um, yeah, man. Uh, Shannon, nice seeing you, man. You Always too, man. a pleasure. Um, real quick, guys. I just I just gotta say that um, you know, I was observing the sideline before the game. And I just want to shout out Tank Lawrence and uh, Malik Collins for standing by Michael Bennett during the pregame. You know, I saw what Tank did, and a lot of people don't get to see that. You know, yeah. um, they nudged him on, and they said, you know, Let's, we're going to hold you down. And, you know, they stood side by side behind, you know. Um, but I just got a couple quick questions, guys, before I let go. I know there's other callers. With the way that Sean Lee been balling the last two games, he's, he's looking like his old self. Do you think they should make the call and start him Mm-mm. over LBE? Mm-mm. And Mm-mm. <laughs> too late, brother. Right? It's too it's late. Too late in the game. Yeah, yeah, too late in the game. Only, the only, no, only, man. only eighty-two gets that privilege. Okay, okay. That's and it. my sec- and my second question is: we we're pretty evenly matched with the Minnesota Vikings because they 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 rock they rock this stack as well on both sides of the ball. But what is the difference? What is the difference? That's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you. You all asked Jesse. Ask you. Jesse, what is the difference? <laughs> he asked you. That's, that's my question. I took the last I question. <laughs> my man from Jersey asked you. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. The difference is, so I think, the difference is, I think, uh, besides, I think they got a better defense at this time due to, to the consistency of being able to take the ball away. I think they scheme in with their coaches a little bit better, now, even though last week did not prove that fact to be true, the way Casey cut them up through the air and on the ground. But, uh, yeah, I'm liking Zim, man. Zim's, Zim's a serious coach, and, uh, and he calls his own defenses too a lot of the time. So you know, those are some slight differences, I think. You know, Now, whether the Cowboys want to do some things different, we'll see, man. 
I mean, Tank Lawrence can go with the best of theirs. Uh, Robert uh, Robert can rush, and we got uh, a young feeling, Michael Bennett. But boy, they they got a cat play linebacker named Anthony Barr. He mm-hmm. different level, man. Yes, he is different they, level. They got the guy Kendricks too, and they secondary man they could bang too. But I did some research, and on the three losses that Minnesota had on a year, if you keep Kirk Cousins in the two twenty and below range, they're losing the game. But don't forget about that back that they got because he's been balling all year, man. It's this, 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 uh, the, kid, the cat from Florida. What's his name? Cook. Dalvin Cook. He can ball. Dalvin Cook, man. No, that's, it up all that's year. a different level, man. Yeah. That's yeah. a different level, homeboy. He he got 100 and about 10 or 15 carries for about 800, for 170 carries for about 894 yeah. yards. Yeah, he's about to get 1,000 yards. This dude with him, man, season. he got 33 catches for 300 and about 30 yards. It, about 10 or 12 TDs, rushing and uh, catching. So, you, when you say uh, he's a different cat, man, he's elite. What, what Minnesota and Nate, this is what one of the things that you've been banging this drum for a long time. One of the things that Minnesota does with Dalvin Cook, they get him the ball. Yeah. In the backfield, outside, outside inside. Yeah. He did secondly the receiver. Throw him screens. He did secondly the receiver. You know, he throw, uh, uh, throw him little – Just they, they find ways to get him the ball and say, we're going to get it to you in space, Dalvin Cook, and then you do what the God-given ability that you have. Yeah. You go and do what you do. That sounds like a hell of a – a hell of a game plan, doesn't it, Nate? Yeah, they don't. Nah, they don't even. <laughs> they don't. They don't even. He ain't the secondary receiver a lot of times. He is the primary receiver. That's what I like. A lot of times Zeke get these old dump offs, and you know we've gotten better. But you don't. Get, Zeke ain't a dump off man. He's primary. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how they look at Delvin. And one of the reasons why he's able to be successful in this and different style of offenses, right? We when you talk about the Cowboys. We're primarily now this year in three wide receiver sets. That brings in the dime or the nickel cornerback, yeah, yes. depending on how we're playing. So now when you try to have Zeke out there doing different things, they're, they're using smaller guys to cover him. When you look at what Minnesota does, they're primarily two wide receiver set, tight end, fullback sometimes. So now – the bigger guys are coming in. So when you give the ball to Dalvin Cook in space, he's usually dealing with guys with 50 numbers on mm-hmm. and not 20 numbers. Right. So when it comes to having to cover him in space, he's able to, to eat up these guys in the 50 numbers, unlike the Zeke and other Cowboys. When he's out to be a receiver, he's sometimes covered with guys who are worth 20. Mm. And even though he's a load to bring down, when he gets the ball, it's tougher for, to get the, for him to get the ball because more Covers. guys who are used to being yeah. cover guys are actually covering. Makes a lot of sense. Do, he's so successful running outside, going outside. How do you? I mean, we, how do you combat that? Set Not the edge. Mm-hmm. Set the edge. Like that has to be something that when you know that there's a back that likes to go outside, and I feel like we're saying the same thing all year long, right? Set the edge. Be be where you're supposed to be. Now, if you start. Diving inside and all that kind of stuff, then he's going. He's going to take good running backs. They can set up their blocks. They can set up their runs. So they see like, oh, he's keep going up the field. All right, we're going to go underneath that. We're going to work things underneath that. If I'm uh, a Tank or Quinn or whoever's out there, setting that edge just means if he's going to bounce, he's not going to have a direct path to bounce. It's going to have to be strung out. And if I have to make him string this run out, then now I allow the cavalry to come and cut off the air supply. But if he can get it and now has a direct line to the outside where guys maybe still dropping back or back, whatever it is, that's when he gets around the corner. But when I set the edge, and I don't have to make the tackle, I just have to make him string that run out a little bit longer to the outside so that now my cavalry gets a chance to come in and, and close out that airspace. So setting that edge is so important, not to make the tackle, but just to make that run now have to go a little bit, you know, uh, 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 east and west before he goes down, you know, north and south. south. So yeah. get him to set that edge and stretch that play a little bit more. Allow your cavalry to come, gang tackle this guy. That's the best way to do it. But if guys aren't setting that edge and he has that direct line to get around the corner, he ha- he has the speed. If he gets to the outside. 
You, you next. It's gonna Quinn. be some. Ne- it's gonna be some next gen stats. <laughs> it's gonna be some next gen. He ran 19, 20, 21 mm-hmm. miles an hour mm-hmm. on that touchdown run. Is Quinn good at setting the? I mean, we know he's good against pass r- on the pass rush. Is he good at running? Yeah, game I think he's more than adequate. The, th- the thing about it is, and nobody's talking about it. They got a nice offensive line. Vikings do. They got a nice offensive line. So if you do. Kind of act like you want to be a little limp shoulder on setting that edge. Mm-hmm. They got the big enough boys to get to get on you and, and pressure you. So, and a lot of times I, I tell people, you can't set that edge uh, too strong. Sometimes, like like he's saying, you, when you set that edge, you got to be give yourself enough leeway to stretch this guy because if you come down there too hard and they lock into you. Some guys will let you get away. Like two and they, if you came in on him real quick, he just grab you and square up. Mm-hmm. You know, and now as you try to move, he pushing you back. And all of a sudden, what you thought was a hard edge, that guy just like Jesse say, just ease right around the corner. Yeah. And you and you heard the term before, it's keeping your outside arm free. Free, yeah. So if you I'm the, be, if I'm the yeah. left edge rusher, if I'm coming up the field, Nate, if I'm the left edge yeah. rusher and the back is coming this way. When I go to set, I got to keep my outside on. Right so you grab him? So I got to so, be here. So when he's coming and I go to set that right. edge, I want to set it here right. so that when he comes here, I'm able to get away. If I get caught on this oh, side. Oh, boy, I got you. Now he got you. Now he got, <laughs> got you. you. He's going to yeah. come around, and I can't break that. So keeping – so keeping my outside arm free, if I'm tank on that left in- defensive end, when I come up the field, I want to keep that left arm free so that I can disengage and be a rallying point. Same thing for Robert Quinn. If I'm on the right defensive end, when I get to go up the field, you see those guys sometimes press with that inside hand and come this way. I got to keep that outside arm free so that when he got when he starts that, you can go with him. I can now disengage, mm-hmm. and he doesn't. He only have half a man to, to tackle, half a man to block. Uh, to grab onto, so when I disengage, I'm able to be a part of that cavalry that's pushing him outside. Yeah, I get caught with that shoulder inside, and he locks in on me around the corner. See, the funny thing about it, you don't want you want to maintain or push the line of scrimmage back. You want to either maintain or push the line of scrimmage back. But it is so tricky because the good backs like Dalvin and and and, and Zeke, if you push that thing too far upfield, like you said, he'll just run cut right it, underneath. Cut you. it back in. No, he'll just run right up underneath you. That tackle just turn you on out. So it's a fine line. Like, they're going to work that this week in practice. Where it's a fine line where you got to really set the edge. You know, keep a square body. You got to stay square. Like, I got to stay square to you. Because if I give up anything too much either way, a great back will hurt you. He'll set you up. He'll fake inside. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I got him. And gone. All right, thanks for the call. G, hang in there, Ray. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll get to you. More phone calls on Hanging with the Boys. The Cowboys Way, where Thanksgiving means spending the day with 100,000 of your closest family and friends to watch the game live. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships show us what success looks like. Where we're all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans have the power to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life. Life the Cowboys way. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America. Copyright 2019, Bank of America Corporation. Hey, Cowboys fans, if you're thinking about attending a game this season, visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Stay at the team hotel, have dinner with a Cowboys legend, and experience AT&T Stadium's exclusive VIP Owners Club. Also, tour the star, get autographs from your favorite players, and talk X's and O's with me, Mickey Spagnola. The official travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys will take care of all your travel needs. Visit CowboysTravel.com. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an S. 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 Give me an O. O. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. What's that spell? So, so. Are we going to win? Not if we play like we cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. So, you're shopping, and that's when you see it. Aisle 23. Dr. Pepper stacked from top to bottom as far as the eye can see. The phrase too good to be true comes to mind, yet there it is. A rich, delicious Dr. Pepper paradise. Wait, did, did that can of Dr. Pepper just open itself for you? They all are. As if to say, so nice to treat you. And even though it feels weird to talk to a can, you pick one up and say, 
It's so nice to be treated. Dr. Pepper, so nice to treat you. Back to hanging with the boys. Back, and Kurt wants to talk about ball security. Oh. Maybe not. Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> Put Tommy John in your end zone. Underwear that's guaranteed to never ride up. Trust me, I wear it. Actually, have some on today. Feeling good. It's like nothing you've ever worn before. Plus, it's backed by the best pay you ever wear. It's free guarantee. Shop exclusive Cowboys underwear. TommyJohn.com slash Cowboys for 20% off your first order. 888-855. So strong at the balls. There you mm-hmm. go. So, so strong at the balls. Mm-hmm. Douglas back there working yeah, the ones and twos is. on that. 888-855-2297. You working on ones and twos on what? Y'all on talking that. about balls and talking about you working on no, ones no, and no. twos. No, no, no. The remix back there. <laughs> hey, the, re- the remix. Whoa. Jesse, where's your mind? Where's your mind? You know Man. where mine's at. Yeah, <laughs> mine don't ever get out of the gutter. <laughs> you know, I hope you told April you got a girlfriend. She knows. Oh, okay. Yeah, she knows. We talk. We talk. Uh, to, I talk uh, to everybody that listens to the show. Okay. I'm like, I'm like. Girlfriend like, status came up? No, but I post my girlfriend on Instagram, okay, so right. if you follow me on Instagram, you know I have a girlfriend. Okay. And if yeah. you don't, I have a girlfriend, everyone. <laughs> April, so be careful. Stop it. Let me lure you into the I, web. I am the Jesse of Instagram. If you hit me up on Instagram, I will talk to you. Okay. So Jesse talks to everyone that pretty much hits him up on Twitter. I talk to everybody that hits me up on Instagram. What about you two guys? Who, me? What? Anti-social? I'll tell you what I want you to know, but that's about it. Antisocial? Yeah, very Anti social media for yeah. sure. Anti social media. Yeah, I'll, I'll chat with friend, uh, fans. I don't get much you're, interaction. You're a Facebook. Y'all two are Facebook dudes, aren't nah, you? I'm no, more, I'm just like, this is what I think, and have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Twitter all the time. I just never post. You don't talk. I'm not a Twitter, I'll hit you back, but it's usually a two one, days later. Two, day or two later. Instagram, I'm, I'm on it. I just have to. There's so much social media in my life with my job, like my personal, I can't. It would drive me. I would have a short lifespan in this job if I tried to keep up with everything personal and business. So I'd really focus in on one. I just happen to focus in on Instagram. I used to be on Twitter a lot. And then Instagram, it's just, I don't know, it's a lot easier. Because of that star. Because of the star. (laughs) Thanks, Reginald. Ray in New Orleans. Hey. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Sugar Ray. What's up, brother? I haven't called in a while, but... uh... This is I'm the same Ray. Look, I don't get too high for the wins. Thank you. I don't get too low for the losses. Thank you. The last time I said that, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Oh no, I was just thinking you for not getting uh, too high or yeah. too low. I'm the same way. The last time I said What that, do you Jesse, get high on? Jesse on women in life, baby. Okay. On women in life. Okay. <laughs> just got to check. The last time I said that, Jesse went off on me cuz we were 3 and 0. Oh. I love Jesse by the way. I love you, We back. were 3 and 0. Oh. And I said, I don't get too high for the wins. I don't get too low for the losses because you know it's a 16 game season. Mm-hmm. He wants you he to went enjoy off it. On me and said, yeah. Ray, why would you not get excited? I want you to get excited. I do get excited, Jesse. But since then, we lost three in a row, and now we won two in a row. I'm the same Ray. I'm the same caller. But look, some of these things that are happening to us, you can't put your finger on it. Okay? It's like that black cat. I thought that was going to be a bad thing for us. I'm like, because it's, it's not only the good teams that we play that we can't be having slow starts to. We did that against the Jets, and it came back and bit us. Okay, so the Jason Witten fumble against the Saints looked a lot like the Randall Cobb fumble last night against the Giants or Monday night against the Giants. And some of these things you can't put your finger on, and then the ball goes through Dak's hands. So we know Dak is good enough to catch a ball from center. So some of these things are just happening to us, but the things we can put our hands on and finger on, what does Nate say you need to travel with? De- defense, defense and running game. You got to run the football and you got to play special teams. That's, That's right. right. We are in a close game and we gave up two back to back kickoff returns to the fifty. That's something because what if they what if they go up another score and it's sixteen three versus twelve three? Now you're in a dog fight. So going forward, I don't know if we can finish if we can start every game like the like the Philadelphia game. But we see what we can do when we do that in our six-game winning streak last year. We did play good teams. We did stop them. And we don't have to, to win the next 10 games in a row. But what we can do is maybe win the next five out of eight, make it to the playoffs, and then give me a good three-game stretch where, you know, you, you get more turnovers. Because ultimately, man, 
I ain't going to tell the great Jason Witten you fumbled against the Saints, you cost us the game, but I can find you three points in the Saints game very easily with all the turnovers that we had and all the mistakes. That's we'll another show. We don't have time for you to go through the whole Saints game. I understand. Game. Look, y'all have a great day. <laughs> love the show. I just wanted to call. I'm the same fan week in and week out. We love, love you, guys. Ray. Thank you for calling, Ray. That's a pretty boring life. What? Same guy? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. He didn't Sorry. say in life. He just said wow. when he came to being a Cowboys wow. fan. He's the same But he way. said you get excited about women in life, though. He said, yeah. so if a pretty girl walked past me, probably. Look, I. So what happened yeah. when she leave? He get real low? Like, depressed? <laughs> nah. But I get what he's saying. Like, there are fans that live and die by this team. And if they win, nah, your messing. week's made. I'm messing with you, Ray. If it's not, it, like, you, your week is ruined. Like you. Like you come no, in. I try to stay after even keel. You come in, you automatically. I try to stay even. Okay, I need an anti. Yeah. And I, what is, and I haven't I, heard nothing about Mexico the last two weeks. Antidepressant. Yeah. Oh, let me go talk to Jesse. I need an antidepressant. Jesse can just take me down even a notch further. So he trapped you. You didn't want to do it, but he trapped you yesterday into being his antidepressant. And then when we come in after a win, Jesse's got to have a Red Bull to get up for the show. So yeah, I was up late celebrating. <laughs> celebrate? Oh, what we, how'd you right. celebrate? Cheering. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, I mean. <laughs> oh, Jesse! <laughs> Cheering. <laughs> Kurt, were you up late celebrating? I was not celebrating. Was no. So you feeling vibrant? What just uh, went across you feel- your screen? I don't know. This man just, just slapped the hell out this other man. What are you watching over there? Some, oh! Some random. Oh, yeah, push it out where we can see it, man. Oh, no, no. Push it out where we can Go see back. it. Go back! This, is, like this is what you call a squirrel moment. I'm yeah, sorry. I just right totally here. got this. Wait till you see what I just watched. Rewind that show then. All right, let's go back to the phones. Real Anthony in Miami. What's up, Anthony? <laughs> What's going on, fellas? Hey, man. Where you been, man? Hey, I t- hey let me tell you something. That's what I told Doug, because I was surprised he was there. I said, man, I felt sorry for these guys, because I think I was one of the cops for that four weeks ago and putting them on a little bad 30-second uh, thing. So I put myself on punishment, man. <laughs> Thank you. Punishment. Thank you for having some, uh, some self-awareness. Thank some you. Discipline. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, I'm family to the show, so it is what it is. We, we help make this thing number one, so I feel good about that. There you go. But real quick. Real quick, the defense, man, you got to give a shout out. Charlie, Lee, man, they, they got to give him two game balls. Jordan Lewis and the addition of Michael Bennett, I love it. What, about eight sacks and about seven turnovers in the last two weeks? Yeah. I feel if we keep that going, man, we keep that going. And Dak, you know, that's my dude. That's my pet cat. Right. Roger, throw that interception. Now, he, he was wrong for throwing it. Now, he saw the man standing right there, Jesus. But to, to come back like he did, hey, man, I'm happy, man. Let's do this thing against Minnesota, man. Let's do this thing. I'm ready, man. Let the boys get on in, man. Wait, you done? Man. You done? That is the quickest I mean, call on, you man. have ever had. It's a new me. I'm turning over oh. a new me. All right, we'll see you next time. All right, thanks, can, Anthony. Can what they did have done defensively with turnovers and sacks, is that sustainable? I is think it, it is. I think it is. Let me I think ask, it okay, is. Let me ask you this. Have y'all ever been a part of a team where – you were just kind of – you were getting by. It was just kind of ho-hum. And then you had one game in some aspect of the game, whether it was special teams, whether it was turnovers, whether it was the offense clicking. And it happened in one game, and then the team kind of changed their character. And going forward, it was a different team. Hmm, I think we had that – I think we had that once. I mean, I can't think – wow, I'm so old. I can't even, but I've had that. We've had yeah. that happen. I was just but wondering. Just, the it, fortunes just turned like it never stopped. I think it was the third Super Bowl or something like that happened, but it just turned in our favor and we just went to roll. And I got to look back at the, just the stats. I mean, just the games, and I could tell you. Because you're halfway through the season. It's yeah. kind of like as a fan, you need is this what to you, push you? Yeah. Right. Or or can you something happen? It's like, oh, okay, this is how this is how it happens. Or you have other players that step up like Jordan Lewis, and you get Michael Bennett, and then something about that chemistry or something just sets it, and it takes it in a different direction. Have you ever had that happen, Jess? Um, no, I don't, not on my professional teams. Yeah. Um, no, but I think I think that is something that definitely can happen. You know, certain things spark you, players, mm-hmm. schemes, games. You have something happen, and it's that aha moment. The light bulb. Goes oh, this off. worked. Yeah, let's try yeah. this more. This, it, you know, like I was listening to the the sounds of the sideline for the Cowboys, right? And they called so good this it week. Was so good, <laughs> so good. And they kept calling Jordan Lewis the ball god. Yeah, right? like 
you just the ball just finds you. You're the ball guy. Like when we put you in, you're just a magnet to the ball. Mm-hmm. And so now, you know, that energy is there. And then you have a guy like Michael Bennett who he's going to be him, but he he plays hard. Mm-hmm. That energy is there. Right? So now you got energy in the front end, energy in the back, and then you got Sean Lee coming in. And he's doing this thing. So these all the little, little different energy pockets that you pick up from and things happen. And it, it can be something that takes you to the next level. It can motivate you. It can kind of open up this new Pandora's box of success uh, for you. But, again, you're going to have to have that sustained throughout the next and this is the eight game. weeks. This, this, so. this, yeah, this, this game is so huge on so many levels because – Okay, you won the Giants game. You you won Philadelphia convincingly. Mm-hmm. Okay, like you came in yesterday and you say, well, I'm still a little bit. Well, that Sunday I was the same. We are like, wow, man, we just need to win this game. Okay, now if you've done that. You now beat, what's the next step? Now mm-hmm. you we playing, I think, a complete team. Even when we played uh, the Saints the first time, they weren't complete. They was they were on their way to being mm-hmm. complete, but they weren't complete, you know. And we still had questions about Green Bay with with Adams, you know. Mm-hmm. I, oh man, if we if we got a chance, this is the most complete team I think to this up to this point in time. Minnesota has off, great defense, a more than capable offense, and their special teams are consistent. So this and they got athletes. You know, you can see at every position, even the help to scout the player, their quarterback, if you get the right one out of the juggling high, and I don't know which one, the good one or the bad one, but if you get the, get the wrong one, he, he can torture. you. Mm-hmm. So here we go. This is the most complete team. Jeff, I want to hear your thoughts on that. I, I thought Philly was a complete team. Mm-hmm. I thought that mm-hmm. game was going to be a much more competitive game. But I agree with you. I think this is that one game. If you win this game, it kind of gives you that, Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. no no one else can say, well, we only played this guys and we only played these guys. No one else can say that you, because you look at this Minnesota team, you're saying this is one of the teams a lot of people have picked to already go to the playoffs and, you know, can make a playoff push. So you beat Minnesota, I think that gives you the confidence in the locker room to say, we can go and beat anybody. And and that might be what you need to, to go into this kind of hell portion of your schedule. Um so yeah, this this is uh, again. I thought Philly would have been a much more competitive game if they would have had. Through. And I hate to, hate to say this, but if they'd have had Deshaun Jackson, then I'd have been like, yeah, because now you got threats. You know, I don't know if it's Aguilar. I don't know if, if it's uh, the Jeffrey. I don't, I don't know what they're missing at receiver, but it, it ain't clicking. It's only clicking with the tight ends. You know, he's either hitting uh, Ertz or the other kid, Goddard. Goddard. But he ain't connecting on a consistent basis with those guys. Then he got the nice running back, 26, coming out of the backfield. Samuel. But, but that ain't that ain't them outside receivers. Yeah. Outside receivers, what I've learned is is they makes they make everything easier. They like an elite back to me. When you got an elite receiver, now it ain't no eight man in the box. It ain't no. It, Never no eight man in the box. I don't care how bad it get. Amari will not let you bring an eighth man in that box. Because any quarterback worth his salt, you can see Dak turn around and be doing (laughs) (laughs) it. Cleaning off his jersey. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's just how it is. Yeah. So, hey. All right. Let's take another break. Nate, you got to get out of here, right? Yeah, man. I appreciate you guys. You bet, man. I th- appreciate you coming for me, Kurt. Keep it, sure. keep it enthusiastic. Do what I can. Keep it upbeat, Kurt. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Jay in West Virginia will get to you. We'll take more calls on Hanging with the Boys. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do do on field at every home game. Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today in the Stadium Pro Shop or at Stetson.com. Before your next AT&T Stadium Barbecue, gear up with OtterBox, the official outfitter of tailgating. It starts with the Venture Cooler. Built tough in America, Venture keeps ice for days and days. 
or stay light on your feet with Trooper Soft Coolers, perfect for packing in your signature side dishes. Tailgating wouldn't be complete without a beverage, so pour one into the Otter Box Elevation Tumbler. It keeps your drinks frosty and toasty. Discover more about Otter Box line of tailgate essentials at otterbox.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, the Seek Geek app and let's go. Seek Geek. Back to hanging with the boys. Back the star up here in Frisco. I'm gonna tell you about something. Now that we got rid of that dead weight, we got rid of the show? dead weight. No, playing. We love we love Nate. I love I love Nate. <laughs> oh I thought you were talking about Kyle. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need Kyle to do some things for me in the future. So, Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Christmas at the Star. <laughs> Cowboys will host. I don't want to know what kind of things you're talking about. <laughs> the, uh, Christmas, the Cowboys will host the third annual Christmas at the Star, presented by Albertsons and Top Thumb. You two are the dirtiest. From mind. November 22nd through December 21st. Uh, we just say what you're thinking, Kurt. <laughs> well, so, there's a big so. difference, though, between saying and thinking. Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Let me read this word for word. Uh, okay. The Dallas Cowboys will host the third annual Christmas at the Star, presented by Albertsons and Tom Thumb, from November 22nd through December 21st. Taking place at the Star in Frisco, hmm. that doesn't make sense, does it? I already told you it was yeah, at the Star. It's kind of repeating, yeah. All right, anyway, enjoy it, friends and family. Yeah, just come out watch Santa Claus. Visit the Star, Star in Frisco. Dot, the Star, what is it? The Star.com. Oh, my God. I came in today. They had Christmas music playing. And they already got Christmas music the playing? The Star out there? in Frisco.com. Yeah, already? All, a lot. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. It's too early. What's your favorite Christmas song? Um, I hate to say it because a lot of people hate the song. Yeah, it's the Paul McCartney simply having a wonderful Christmas. Really? Yeah, I don't it's know. Kind of cheesy. It's real cheesy, but yeah, that's a good one. What's yeah. yours, Jesse? Grandma got ran over by. Oh, come are, you, on. are you serious? Are you a, are you a Scrooge? <laughs> do you not like Christmas? I love Christmas. <laughs> Why do you like that song? It's about death. I know. I was reading about my grandmother. So we used to always like when we used to get mad at her. Oh, we just play that. <laughs> <Sing> that. <laughs> we used to always play that. What about you, Doug? Uh, I'm going to be similar to Kurt. I like uh, the John Lennon. Uh, so this is yes, Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, and I, you? I think I like. I think my favorite's Blue Christmas by Elvis. Oh, yeah. Just because the way too. way yeah. it starts. Oh, 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 blue. Nice. Yeah. All right. Full no, my party. And this Christmas. It will be. Which one is that? I don't know who sings that one. A very special Christmas. Uh-huh. I wonder, well, if De- I wonder if Duro has a Christmas song out. Ah, uh, he should do one. He should do a Christmas mm-hmm. album. Duro, if you're listening, I don't know about a whole album. <laughs> Just one. No one's one song, we're good. Uh, one yeah. song. He should do, do a one Christmas song. song. Maybe we can talk him into it on the show. Like Run DMC, they had that Christmas song. Oh, dude, that's what. What is it? Christmas in Harlem. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. That's a, that might be my. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It was dun. the original Die Hard soundtrack. <laughs> was it? Yeah. That's where I first heard it. Oh. Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Oh boy. What do you it think? It is Kurt? a Christmas movie. Well, it takes place around Christmas, <laughs> so I guess. <laughs> That's one of the long, <laughs> longest debated yeah. things ever. What do you think? Christmas movie or no? No. no? Speaking of movies, I started watching uh, Jack Ryan on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw season one. I, I got to go like on season two. Three episodes in. Have you seen it? Is that Hulu? Pretty solid. Man, Amazon. Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah, season one was all right. Yeah, yeah I gotta check out. Get yeah, going on. Pretty season good. Two. Uh, what do y'all? What it, before we get to James or Jay? What What do you? Are you binge watching anything? Or are you in? Or just watching any series right now, Kurt? Uh, we started watching The Patriot on Amazon. 
Is it good? It's not bad. It's not. I just got done watching uh, uh, Mind Hunter. That was pretty good. Yeah. So. What about you, Jesse? You in anything? Um, finishing up Queen of the South. Is that good? Mm-hmm. I heard it's really good. Yeah. Finish up Queen of the South and waiting because I started watching it and then I just. You know, once you miss a couple of weeks, you'd be like, all right, I'll catch it later. Yeah. So I'm, I'm about like six episodes away. I don't like the binge watch. No? I, just, I know. I just feel like, because once it's all done, it's done. I'm like, what do I have now? <laughs> right. So I kind of want to like. Stretch it out. I literally just watch one episode and I'll wait a wait week and I'll watch another episode. <laughs> An old school. Yeah, yeah. I just want to keep, I want to keep the chronological order going yeah. and not just get it all out the way because I don't have anything else. But not and waiting for Ozark. Oh, season three. Uh, yeah. See, I, when I is that? Watch season two. Dude, right? you need to. Mm, yeah. You need to get on that. Yeah. When does when's that come out? Soon, right? I don't know. I think I don't know. No. Twenty twenty, probably. Mm. Doug, what about you? Just finished Goliath's most uh, recent season. That's with oh, Billy Bob Thornton, like right? Yeah, he's really good. Is Man, it good? Season it, two is so off the wall. I don't know if I can do season three. Yeah, it's even more bizarre. There's a really. It's. Season two it's got is a little bizarre. bit of supernatural stuff going on, but Dennis Quaid's in it. He's really good. Mm-hmm. So is it worth? Should I start it? I'm looking sure. for something to start. Yeah, absolutely. Kurt, S- season one I thought was fantastic. Okay, season, that's enough for me to get started. Season two we just had the, some bizarre storylines. Can that I tell you a funny like story three too? About was is it David Qua- David Quaid Dennis Quaid? Mm-hmm. Dennis Quaid. Yeah. So when I was on the other network, other station, mm-hmm. I kept calling him. Dave. He called in, random call in. Don't know how he got through. He was he does comedy. And he was doing a comedy show in Dallas. He calls in, and I mistakenly kept calling him David. Mm-hmm. He was so drunk. <laughs> it was a Saturday morning. <laughs> he was drunk. And he like called in, like, hey guys. We're like, who is this? <laughs> is this? <laughs> like, and he went on this rant and no, it wasn't it wasn't comedy, it was music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a band. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was doing he was doing his band. It, mm-hmm. it was the r- most random weird call. He never corrected me from calling him David. I called him David the entire interview, and then after I got over, my call was like, "You do know his name is not David, right?" <laughs> I'm like, "What is his name?" <laughs> he goes, "Dennis." I'm like, "Are you sick?" He was so drunk, he was just rambling on and on and on about, "Come on out, we're gonna do this and this and that." And I kept calling him David by mistake. Yeah. And he never, never picked up anything. on it, and just the whole interview was like, and they were laughing at me like, you know, his name is not David. But I need to go find that. Is that online somewhere? They probably wiped out everything that I did. Yeah, just deleted you. You've been deleted <laughs> from the deleted, database. I've been deleted from the database. He's not coming to get any any stuff for anything else. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the phones. Jay in West Virginia. Sorry you had to hold so long, man. Welcome to the show. That's all right. That's all right. Well, Are you binge I've watching never, anything? I, I've never missed a show. No, oh, thanks, man. Are you binge that. watching anything? Yeah, I'm glad to see Kurt looking better okay. and feeling better. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We're happy about yeah, that, my too. Mom's, my mom's been going through the same thing for about three, four years. Mm. and uh, It's tough, but yeah, got to keep gotta fighting. Be tough to take it. Yes, sir. Anyway, my question is, do you think Michael Bennett actually uh, gave us that actual little bit of something that we need to get the so-called hot boys to step up to the plate <laughs> and and also if Heath injury ends up being something do you think they'll possibly give Donovan Wilson a chance to maybe get some snaps two good questions thanks Jay and thanks for listening every day man first one let's uh We'll be praying for your mom as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're glad to see Kurt, too. You do look good. You got to shine, too. I don't know oh, if it's yeah. the hair. It's just or, being around you guys. Is that what it is? Yeah. Just a just a blooming, blossoming flower over here in the room <laughs> okay, with us. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bennett. Let's talk about that one first. What did, what did you see? We didn't really get into it. What did, you, did you watch him a lot during the game? My eyes were on 79 and 50. What did you see? Mm-hmm. Um, activity. Yeah. Um, is he disruptive? Yes. Like we, like we talked about? Yes. Yeah. And he's eating up blocks. And that's so important. When you can eat up blocks, Sean Lee. That's why Sean Lee and 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 Jalen Smith had 24 combined tackles. Because instead of having Xavier Woods have 11 tackles in a game, mm-hmm. and Jeff Heath have nine tackles in a game. When your guys up front are eating up blocks, that means the guys behind him are roaming free. And the and the issues that Jalen and Layton have had is when those 
block or those offensive linemen are able to get into the secondary, Correct. right? So if yeah, he's eating up level. blocks, that's right. great for them, right? And so that's great. That's great because now they're like, oh, I, I, I see it and I go get it. I don't mm-hmm. have to worry about the you know, garbage in front of me. Very active. And when you're talking about a guy playing inside, the guys playing inside, they don't get any glory, right? Aaron Donald is an anomaly mm-hmm. for him to have 17 sacks in the season, whatever he had. That doesn't come from those guys in there. Those guys are, are block eaters. They, I want to take up two men so that the guys behind me get all the glory. Mm-hmm. And he was just active. He was disruptive. You know, his, his, his energy, his knowledge. He has little tidbits that he knows about. I mean, you know, he played for the Philadelphia Eagles. You know what that means? He played the Giants two times a year, too. Right. Mm-hmm. So he had little tidbits that he might have brought in, that he definitely brought in from his time in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And wherever else that he was at playing against that team. So he was like, listen, we played against this guy. Do this. Do that. You know, I played against Saquon. Do this, do that. So all that information bringing in, it helps. And also, they got another guy in the rotation who gives them quality snaps, gives them experienced snaps. So you're not getting some random young guy in there trying to figure it out. You got a guy who knows exactly what to do, is confident in what he's doing, and go out there and do it because he, like Jason Garrett, because he's played football for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. He's been pretty good at football for a very long right. time. Good football player. Did Coach give uh, an update on Jeff Heath's status in the press conference this morning? Uh, just that he's progressing. They feel like right now he's got a good shot of playing. What was it 12 little... stitches he had in his knee? Yeah. He had to get 12 stitches in his knee, Is that right? what it was? Knee yeah. laceration? Yeah. Yeah. I, one of the guys explained it, just almost like a V cut in the flat skin, just kind of flap over oh. and sew it up. So where it is on the knee, I'm not sure, but uh, it doesn't sound at this point like it, it may keep him out or whatever. Yeah. So, so Donovan Wilson, is that is that a project? I mean, that's probably not somebody think, we're going to see this well, year. Darian Thompson is probably your next man up. Yeah, I mean, he's which played, he's the one that came in yeah, the game. Yeah, right? he's, he's played pretty well. So I think Wilson may see more time just – if he doesn't play, just by you know, need another bot. Yeah, right. But uh, Thompson will be the guy who'll step up in there. Which and he's done a pretty good Jesse, job. Yeah, as Jesse was saying, he's played pretty well. I yeah. think so. Yeah, I mean, when he went out of the game, defense all of a sudden changed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go back to the phones. Maybe our last call. Maybe not. James, this is a really big week for you in the college world, right? Where's James from? Are you going to fill us in? Well, I was going to let Hello. him fill you in, but he's James, apparently up, not on the phone anymore. Hey, hey, yo, what up, man? I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, you a Tiger fan? Uh, yeah, I'm part of that Tiger Nation. Yeah, big big weekend for you, huh? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what? That's part. Of, being a Tiger fan is kind of like being a Cowboy fan. You don't want to get too high because history says – when you do, you're going to get let down. So I, I get where you're coming from, man. You don't feel real good about the Alabama game? Well, no, it's not It's not that I don't feel any good about it. It's just something about the coaching staff, I guess, like with the Cowboys. You know, something about the coaching mm-hmm. staff. Right. Uh, maybe this year is different, though. Um, Let's hope. I have a couple quick questions. Uh, the first one is, why is it do you think that, for some reason, the coaches will not adapt or change uh, the game plan? Because it seems like, okay, if you have this game plan, that this is what you want to implement once you approach this team, and you see that this is not working. Why won't they just change and to take whatever the defense is giving you, causing them to make an adjustment, and then you are able to implement your game plan? And the second question is, uh, I guess it's more for Jesse, um, is it an audible that that could do that, like, okay, when you see a blitz, I know change the play, but maybe alter a receiver's route. Okay, so like if you see they bring the blitz up, is it an audible that you can get like maybe your slot receiver to go into a slant versus going to a dig or whatever he was doing? And um, I'll take your answers offline. Thanks a lot. Thanks, James. Right. Um, let's go second question and move back to the first question. Okay. Um, yeah, he's done that. Dak has done that. Uh, most of the times, if you're a slot guy or tight end guy or a receiver by yourself, they call it the hot route. Mm-hmm. If, if a guy's coming and you don't, you know that. I saw that in Wedding Crashers. Hot route, hot route. <laughs> Is that the same thing? Probably, sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Just want to know. What, what are you saying? <laughs> that some, sometimes, guys, the court, Dak will tell a specific uh, wide receiver, you do something different where everybody else kind of – Yeah, no, he, he does that. Yeah. He does that. Is um, that a hand signal? Is that just him leaning back and going, hey, go do this? It's both. Yeah. Depends on how close you are to him. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he's close enough to you, he can say, 
hey, and say, curl it up, curl it up, or whatever. Yeah. Um, hand signals always work best because mm-hmm. that way you don't have to, you know, blurt the blurt the, uh, the the route out. Right. But that happens a lot. I was really impressed the way Dak took over that game against the Giants, and you saw him at the line of scrimmage changing a lot of the stuff. Um, not necessarily going from run to pass, uh, but pass to run, changing the direction of, of which where they were going with the football. Um, but he he's been doing that. That that's that's football quarterback and that's football league one on one. I want I want to get my guys, you know, doing the things that I want them to do. And and in the game planning process of it, you know, hey, when he brings him, that linebacker is coming right now. So let's break out, you know, and I'm just gonna hit you right now. Or you'll see a guy just give it to me right now. And let me go and make some. Uh, and 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 make whatever I can in that particular uh, in that particular route. But he's been doing it for a while. Yeah. What about the game plan? Are you seeing them adapt, or is it? That's never been that's never been Jason Garrett's thing, right? Yeah, it's been in game adjustments have always kind of been a bit of an issue. That's never that. been his thing. And oddly enough, he's not a person who's going to scrap the whole game plan mid game and change it. Mm-hmm. There's little adjustment. You go into the half, you know, going to halftime. You don't have much time to do a lot, but and we keep bringing this up. You'll see Bill Belichick on the sideline. He has the big whiteboard out and he's writing stuff. Bill will change. The, he will. Bill will scrap an entire game plan in the middle of the game. In the middle. In the middle of a quarter, and go. That ain't working. Mm-hmm. Here's what we're gonna go to. And sometimes even that doesn't work. There's sometimes the team just have your day. You know, they just have your number that mm-hmm. day. But for Jason. Historically, that's just not what he does, right. not who he is. He's basically, this is what we practice. This is what we game plan for. This is what we're calling. This is what I'm comfortable with. And execute it better. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's it, the biggest thing. Is it tough, though, when you've gone all week saying we're going to do this and then, you know, mid-game you've got to go, oh, you know. I mean, is that tough from a player standpoint to think, okay, now we're totally changing? Or I guess it's all the same plays. It's just calling. Yeah, yeah. it's know? it's – but sometimes you have to go like, you know what? That ain't working. And and players know when it ain't working. Yeah. Players know when like, ah, I messed up on that. If we execute better on – sometimes you just go – They're shutting it down. This ain't it. Yeah. Like we thought something mm-hmm. and they did something different. This ain't it. And and you would hope that that communication was there to change it. But Jason has always been one that just kind of, you know, if I just keep hitting it, eventually right. I'll get through it. And it's almost like they play the percentages. Like they know, okay, if we go in and we see these looks, if we run it ten times, it's going to be successful four times, and that's enough to win the game if we execute. And it's almost like if we don't run, if we don't get there ten times, then the odds of that working out are not going to happen. So it's almost like they play probabilities instead yeah. of situational football. Where hey, we tried this, and this the personnel is not matching up the right, right way. Right, you know, and it's. I mean. I think that's what's frustrating from a – I get where they come from. They're like, okay, we got all these statisticians and – Long term, it's going to work. Right. If you stick with it and you run it through the end of the game, you're going to run into X, Y, Z, and it's going to work out this many times and that's enough to win. But when you're a fan and you're looking at it and you're like, they're running into a brick wall. Like every time they run this formation or this play, it's frustrating when they don't adapt. And people always bring up the Atlanta game, right? And you go – yeah. That's Stevie could have seen that you need to give that man some help, <laughs> and no one and, and and no one with the headsets on, right? Did anything about it? All right, Kurt, we done. We're done. All good right. seeing you, man. Good Glad you're you. here, Jesse. You, Jesse. Good seeing you, man. Thank you, my brother. Nate, thanks for contributing, Douglas. It's good to have you back, man. All right, it was Douglas. fun. Glad Six minutes, fun. Dougie Fresher Glad, on. Glad to have you on, on the keys again. <laughs> Kyle, we'll see you tomorrow. We're Caden, gonna, what's up? We're gonna, Caden, what's up? We're gonna work on that, Doug. We're gonna get you a guest spot, even if you just run the phones or something. We're gonna okay. get you once a month. We're gonna get you on here. Okay then. All right, we will be back tomorrow, one o'clock again, on Hanging with the Boys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!